Well, firstly, Dave, uh, it's been an extremely overwhelming experience, this whole project, really. Um, we certainly didn't um, understand or comprehend what could come of something so exciting. Um, I mean, obviously, we're excited about it ourselves, but, you know, to have, a, to have the public be very excited about it too is really awesome, you know. So we're, we're really, really happy and overwhelmed at the, at the, the take on it all, I suppose. Um, back to the car, really, um, the engine itself was, it started life as an, originally as a 3.2 Carrera uh, engine, but look, we've, um, we've pulled the thing down to absolutely the last nut and bolt. Um, uh, the, the, the engine's been completely, I, I guess for one, it's been blueprinted, so it's, which means um, basically you, you make every tolerance in that engine absolutely perfect. So, and you know, everything is abs as, as brilliant as it can be. So you, you, you take an engine and then you just, I guess, fettle it for want of a better word and make, make sure everything's perfect. Is that something that's done to a, a normal production car? Look, or have you gone beyond production? Uh, no, no, absolutely. It's, they don't do this to production cars, you know. Porsche are pretty good with their tolerances and things like that. They, they're probably a lot better than your average car, I suppose you'd say. Um, but we went beyond what Porsche have done and made sure that every, every valve weighed the same, every piston weighed the same, every piston pin weighed exactly the same. The, the combustion chamber CCs were identical in every cylinder. It was, you know, it had to be absolutely perfect. We've, we've also increased the bore size. We've taken it out to a 3.4 litre. Had some special pistons made, but I'm not gonna elaborate on that because that's my IP. Um, We've, you know, we've had some special valve springs made. We've had special valves made. There's a lot of internal componentry in the engine that's certainly not standard. It had to be an engine that would last like a production engine. So we haven't, you know, while yes, the tolerances are all very, very fine, it's more about reliability uh, than, than stress. So all the components, we. You know, the engine itself has been designed so that it's not stressed as such. So, yeah, it, it, look, we could build an engine that would make probably another 100 horsepower at the rear wheels very, very easily, but it would be stressed. So this engine, you know, while it's not, it's not an out-and-out -out race engine, it's, it's more about a, a very, very well-built production type engine, increased capacity for better torque, uh, more drive, you know, easier drivability, that sort of thing. So it's really, again, it's an engine that performs well, but it's not a stressed engine. Great. Um, are you prepared to share the brake horsepower that you're getting out of the engine? So, look, we've, we've still got a few things in the pipeline. We're trying a few, we're always trying stuff on it. Uh, currently, it makes a little over, it makes uh, 217 horsepower at the rear wheels, as of yesterday. <laughs> um, but we, again, we have probably five or six other things that we are still going to try. Um, you know, we, our aim originally was that we, we, when we sat down and spoke about it, we said, look, if we can have the car produce around 200 horsepower at the rear wheels, that would be a, a great thing, you know. Um, you know, like we, we certainly have cars out there with well over 300 at the rear wheels in similar sort of an engine, but very stressed to do it all, you know. And the engine would cost four times what this engine costs to produce. How does 217 uh, brake horsepower compare to a you know, straight off the production. So, so, okay, so the production car produced 231 horsepower at the flow wheel. You take 30% off that, and that'll give you your rear wheel horsepower, which, well, you know, I'm not a mathematician. So, but, but it's certainly, you know, we're, we're close to what the, the car made at the flow wheel at the wheels. Wow. Right. So it's certainly up on a standard, you know, up a long way on a standard car. It's about, it's about a real broad power range and it's got to deliver nice power throughout from, from nothing to, you know, to its maximum RPM. Um, originally when we built it we struggled with the tune trying to get everything right to, because of the mods that we'd done and, and things that we'd done. Uh, it, it, was, it had some holes, what we call holes in the mechanical world. Um, so it's about smoothing out the holes and all of that's done with tuning. And, 
<clears throat> we, we, we've maintained the standard ECU or the engine computer is just a standard Porsche computer and to make adjustments to that is quite difficult. So you, you have to have some pretty special equipment and some special people with some really good ability and able to get in there and make changes and make it all work. Um, probably in hindsight, we might have changed the ECU, but you know we're too far down that road now where you know, originally, again, when we set out to do this car, it was all about trying to build something for a, for a price that people would be comfortable with. And we thought that you know, using all the standard ECU and pretty much all of that sort of thing would be a, a better way to go because it's only an additional cost, you know. But uh, look, when we get it right, it should be easy to replicate, but it's cost considerable money and time to try and make it perfect. Um, and, you know, it's again, it's that, I guess it's that, that never ending search for perfection, isn't it? You know? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, sure, you've got to have something that looks great and sounds fantastic, but really for us in house, um, especially in the workshop, um, it's more about how it handles and how it performs and how it, it stops. And, you know, it's about building the complete package, it's not just about something that looks kind of cool. It's also about having that complete package. And that leads nicely to um, yeah, the stopping power of this. I actually haven't driven it yet, um, but uh, fingers crossed. Um, <laughs> but I have been told by those who have that the thing just handles and stops. And yeah. What, what have you done there? To well, <clears throat> it's certainly far beyond a standard brake package. We've, had, we've sat again sat down and designed a package around something that's going to work properly it'll have good feel um, they're certainly a lot bigger than standard we have four piston calipers all round on the car um, we had to fit they're, they're too big to fit under the original wheels obviously these cars came originally with 16 inch 15s and 16 inch rims this we've had to have 17 inch wheels specially made to fit over the brakes um, and again the same sort of thing a lot of thoughts gone into um, this package that we've put on the car. It works with the standard booster and brake master cylinder, so um, it's, it's simple but yet works perfectly well. I wouldn't say cheap, it's simple, but it certainly works really, really well. Um, I, I noted that there's some um, RSR parts on there. Now, RSR is such a big brand in terms of Porsche. Um, what, what are the RSR parts? Put on there. What oh, does that look, mean? Why have you put them on there? Look, RSR, RSR stuff is just, uh, I guess, Porsche's RSR as a car was their pinnacle race car for many years. And some of these parts are, while they're not pe period parts, they're RSR replica type parts. And a lot of it's to do with the sway bars and some of the shocks and the springs and so, sort of very, very similar to that. They're, I mean, I'm happy to tell you they got it's got Bilstein shocks, but they've not standard they've been again they've been revalved and changed to our spec the spring rates it's got coilovers under it instead of torsion bars again won't give too much away but you know um it's all very different than a standard um 32 career or 911. it's really a, a racing car that you can road register yeah essentially you know um probably probably not as hardcore as a race car it ha again like we said in earlier in the piece it had to be a bit of a compromise around a nice car that you could actually get in and drive to work if you wanted to, or you could take it to the track. Yeah. You know, it's, it, it, is, it is a little bit of a compromise. It's not an out and out hardcore race car, because if it was that, people couldn't then enjoy it on the road. So it has to be, has to be something that's, that works for all facets. The other thing that we haven't really spoken about is our transmission. Uh, transmission in the car is a G50. We chose a G50 transmission in this car because the shift's a bit nicer got a hydraulic clutch over the earlier style trans. Um, yeah, in some ways a lot nicer and easier to use. Um, the gear ratios we've kept standard because mainly it is used as a road car, um, but we've put a special diff in there. Uh, it is a limited slip differential, but it's a, it's, look, it's just, again, it's a development product. Um, can't really tell you just much at the moment, but you know, I guess watch this space. Um, Again, it's again, it's it's about searching for that the ultimate thing. We're trialling a bunch of things on the exhaust on that car, so at the moment it's running what we call SSI heat exchangers, so it retains the heater, and it's got a specially made muffler that's it's sort of like a GT3 style muffler, I guess. 
so um, where it comes in and goes out the middle. Again, we're about to trial another three different mufflers. Um, so again, it's about that search for the ultimate power, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Um, so there's, there's a whole bunch of things going on around exhaust on the car. Yeah. Um, again, there's also, there's also with exhaust, there's a, quite a fine line uh, where you want to you have good power, you want to have a reasonable sound, but by the same token, you don't want something that when you're sitting in the car is going to do your head in because of the drone or the drumming because that's quite a common thing with Porsche engines being that flat six, you get, a, you get this drum and um, it certainly does people's heads in. So uh, you don't want that. <clears throat> so again, it's about finding that, I guess, that perfect balance of uh, sound, performance, but yet comfort. Yeah. And um, have the orders started rolling in yet? I mean, I, I, yeah, I look, know two people that have said, oh, I'm going uh, to buy me one of them. I'm yeah, it's, it's interesting. It's, um, since, the, since the video did come out, um, we've, had, we've had some very, very positive phone calls. Um, we are currently starting another project for another customer, but it's not a, it's not a group four. It's something, again, different. Watch this space. <laughs> uh, it's pretty cool. Um, again, something that no one's done in this country. It's been done overseas, uh, but hasn't been done here. Um, yeah, I think that, again, it's going to be kind of a cool thing as well. So, yeah. And obviously a lot of the R&D from the Group 4 will go yeah. into that, right? Yeah, absolutely, and that's what it's all about. Uh, yeah. You know, you, lessons learnt. Um, yeah. Yeah. You're, always, you're always learning. Every day it's like going to school, isn't it, here? Yeah. Um, and it is literally like that for a lot of our guys. You know, every day we're learning something, we're finding something new, we're, you know, we're trying to, I guess, keep ahead of the game or stay in the game, you know? So there's, all, there's always interesting things going on. Fantastic. Grant, thank you for your time today. I know uh, there's a lot of people hanging to watch this and, and, and <laughs> hear about it, and we'll be back real soon to um, start following the next build. Look forward to it. Thanks, mate. Cheers, Cheers. Dave. Bye, mate.